Hi everyone. Today we're going to take a look at using the expert problem solving strategy to solve problems that have elastic forces involved. So uh, bungee cords can be modeled as springs. Okay, They have this elastic property to them. And I guess that's a good thing if you plan on uh, bungee jumping, you would want to have a cord that will stretch. Um, and one of the reasons for this is because you don't want to experience a very high acceleration. Um, as you probably uh, read in the textbook, this is a dangerous situation for some humans and uh, for all humans, I guess, and not really uh, something that you would want to happen to you. So if you were so inclined to go um, bungee jumping, um, it's important to consider the person's mass um, and, a, and a number of other factors when choosing the spring constant of a particular bungee cord. So for this problem, we are looking for the spring constant. Okay, it's our unknown here. Um, we know the mass of the person is 51 kilograms. And here it says that the person is falling down at a rate of no more than 4.2 meters per second squared. So I know that this is an acceleration. I'm uncertain about the sign at this point. I think once we um, assign some directions and put a sketch on this, um, we can assign whether or not this acceleration is a positive 4.2 or a negative 4.2. And the last value here, this 12, is is uh, describing the displacement of uh, the cord. Okay, so this will be the displacement of the cord. Okay, and this will be the 12 meters. But I think we need to start to look at um, some direction here. So, in terms of direction, let's say we can make in the y down negative and up positive okay so i'm going to draw before and after pictures so this will be the initial state of the spring which in this case is the bungee cord and the final of the spring so initially we have a bungee cord and then it says that the bungee cord is going to stretch. And this displacement that's given is the displacement of the spring. In other words, the length of this stretch would be 12 meters. And the direction of this vector is down. So this is the initial length of the spring. So the displacement is down. So I'm going to say that this... Uh, because we made the downward direction negative is displacement is negative 12 meters okay so now I'm gonna put a person here this bungee jumper oh, my other class uh, yelled at me about this because they wanted the cord at the person's feet they wanted this to be so I'll, I will gladly do that. All right, so here's our here's our bungee jumper. Next thing I want to do is I want to figure out the direction of this acceleration. And in order to do that, I think we should do a motion diagram. So the initial position is here, and the velocity initial for this bungee jumper is down. So my first velocity vector is down. And when I read the problem here, it says that the purpose of this cord is to slow a person. So if my initial velocity vector is this big, the next one would be smaller, and the next one even smaller. So based on this, I know that acceleration is in the opposite direction of velocity. So the acceleration in this case is up while my velocities are down. So the acceleration that we were given in the problem, the 4.2, is a positive 4.2 meters per second squared. 
Next step of my problem solving strategy is to analyze all of the forces exerted on the system. So I'm going to choose my system I'm going to choose my system to be the person and we know that the person has a mass of 51 kilograms. Before I get started here, because I knew that acceleration was up, I also know that F net will be upward. So when I think about the forces exerted on the person, their weight force is their mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we'll use negative 10 for our g, the, ne um, the acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared downward. So this would be negative 510 newtons. When I think about this person as the system, what else is touching him or her? Well, the bungee cord is attached to them and exerts a force upward. And I want to be careful to draw this upward vector larger than the weight vector because I know that net force will be up. So this is force of the bungee cord on the person. And this is force of earth on the person or weight. So I don't know force of bungee cord on the person. But because I know that the bungee cord can be modeled as a spring, I know that this is an elastic force. So force of bungee cord on the person is an elastic force, which means that it can be modeled using Hooke's law. So that this will eventually equal the opposite uh, sign of the product of the spring constant times the displacement. When I take a look at this, I don't know force of bungee cord on the person, and I also um, don't know the spring constant. So I'm really not... Uh, ready to find this just yet. So where can I go from here? Well, I do know mass and I do know acceleration. So I'm going to try and find this F net here that I've been looking for. So F net mass times acceleration. So we have 51 kilograms times 4.2 meters per second squared. And so the product of 51 times 4.2 gives you 214.2 newtons. And the acceleration was positive. Mass doesn't have a sign, so this net force is also positive, which makes sense because in the diagram um, this F net is positive. So now I can fill this in. Net force, some of the forces in this case, is the weight force plus the force of the bungee cord on the person. Net force we found to be 214.2 newtons. Our weight force is negative 510 newtons plus force of the bungee cord on the person. So if I add 500 newtons to each side, 510 newtons to each side, I can find force of the bungee cord on the person. So this would be 724.2 newtons. as force of the bungee cord on the person. Now that I know force of bungee cord on the person, I can use this to find the spring constant K. So remember this displacement of the spring is downward or in the negative direction. So I have a K times negative 12 meters. Here's our elastic force k times negative 12 is negative 12 meters k, and this is you know the opposite of this. Um, so this ends up being 724.2 newtons 
equals just 12 meters times k. To get k by itself, we'll divide both sides by 12 meters. So in the end, 724.2 divided by our 12 meters gives you 60.35. Um, and again, the, the units on this are just Newton divided by meters. Um, those terms cancel. So 60.35. And when I look back at my problem here, I have two significant uh, digits here for my answer. So I have k here equal to 60 newtons per meter. So in terms of the problem solving process, you'll see a lot of commonalities between how you solve any dynamics problem, whether that be elastic forces or friction forces. It, it really doesn't matter. The basics are the same and the tools that you have will serve you well. If you have any questions about elastic forces or anything you've seen in the video, um, please uh, shoot me an email and um, I'll try to help you out.